Welcome to Professor Messer's free CompTIA A plus certification training course on upgrading to Windows XP. I'm James Messer, and in this module, we're going to talk about what's required to perform an upgrade to the Windows XP operating system. These requirements come from the CompTIA uh, Essentials Exam 220-601, Section 3.2, where we need to install, configure, optimize, and upgrade operating system. So we're going to talk about the considerations we need for the upgrade process. And for the implementation, I'm going to step you through an actual upgrade to Windows XP. Before we get started on the upgrade, we need to do a pre-upgrade checklist to make sure we have all our ducks in a row prior to actually doing the upgrade. We need to perform the upgrade itself. And then afterwards, there's a number of verification and updates that we need to apply. So we're going to talk about those today as well. The upgrade paths available to Windows XP are pretty cut and dry. These are upgrades to Windows XP Professional. That's what will be referenced on your exam. From Windows 95, I cannot upgrade to Windows XP. If you recall some of our previous videos, I can upgrade Windows 95 to 2000 and Windows 2000 to Windows XP. Maybe that's the path that someone who's running Windows 95 would have to take. Fortunately, anybody who's running Windows 98, Windows Millennium Edition, which is Windows ME, Windows NT Workstation, Windows 2000 can upgrade all of those directly to Windows XP. And that's what we're going to do today is upgrade a Windows NT Workstation device directly to Windows XP. There's a number of requirements for Windows XP Professional we need to think about. What is the minimum hardware that we need just to run the operating system? And I've taken this slide from one of our previous uh, videos that talks about the minimum requirements and what Microsoft recommends if you're going to be using this operating system day to day. Now, these are still relatively low considering the types of applications we have today, but these are the minimum requirements just to get the operating system running. So we need at least a 233 megahertz machine with 64 meg of RAM, one and a half gigabytes of hard drive space, at least a CD-ROM or DVD-ROM drive. Windows XP does not come on floppy disks, so you cannot upgrade it from floppy like you had the option to in Windows 2000. We also would like at least a decent sized video, and a mouse and a keyboard will certainly come in handy for performing the upgrade. Before we begin the upgrade, let's talk about what's needed. First, let's talk about software. Not all applications run in all operating systems. Just because you have an operating uh, application that runs in the NT operating system and you upgrade doesn't mean that application is going to work any longer. Although it's still Windows, you're going from Windows to Windows, there are still big differences in the operating system. So you want to check with the manufacturer of your software to make sure this, the applications that you use day to day are going to upgrade. In some cases, that's 10 applications. With some users, that's 100 applications. You should just make a list, go through your list, and make sure that it's all going to work. You also want to check and make sure that the hardware that you're installing this on is also going to work properly. As you may recall from some of our previous videos, every piece of hardware you have must have a device driver that is specific to the operating system that's running on that device. So if you're moving to Windows XP, you need to make sure that all of your hardware has a driver that will work in Windows XP. Otherwise, there'll be pieces of hardware, an audio card, a video card, a printer, that will not work once you get to the XP operating system. Now, fortunately, Microsoft has put something called the Windows XP Upgrade Advisor on their website and on the hard drive or, or the CD that Windows XP ships with. So you can run this program prior to doing the upgrade, and it will tell you if everything on here is up to snuff, it's, if it's going to run and there's device drivers for that. There's something called a Windows logoed product list. This is a certification that Microsoft provides to products that will work on Windows XP. XP. So these Windows logoed products are also useful. You'll know that if your printer has a Windows logo on it or it's on the list of Windows logoed products, that it should work just fine in Windows XP. These device drivers are very important. Just make sure that you're updating and have device drivers for Windows XP. You don't want to do an upgrade and finally get all that upgrade process done and then realize a very important part of your system isn't going to work anymore because you don't have a device driver for it. Starting the upgrade for Windows XP is a relatively simple process. And I mention this because if you recall from our Windows 2000 upgrade, if you were going to run this from the command line and you were running in a 16-bit operating system versus a 32-bit operating system, then you had to run different executables to get that upgrade to take place. And I left this on here. Even though we're not upgrading to Windows 2000, I left this in this presentation just so you could see the convoluted method that you would have to go through just to upgrade to Windows 2000. Well, with Windows 
Windows XP, Microsoft streamlined a great deal of this. If you want to upgrade Windows XP, you run setup.exe for both a 16-bit and a 32-bit operating system. So whether you're running from um, Windows 98, whether you're running from Windows NT and you're upgrading to XP, you just run the setup program and it takes care of it from there. So now that we've made our list of applications, we know that all of our hardware is going to work properly in the upgrade. Let's perform an upgrade. I have taken my Windows XP CD-ROM and I've put it in my drive H. This virtual machine is going to access. I have plenty of memory, 256 megabytes. I've got four gig of hard drive space. I'm currently running Windows NT on this operating system. And if you want to start up the operating system and perform an upgrade, you need to be logged in to that operating system to begin the upgrade. That's your best bet. So we're going to start Windows NT Workstation on our system. And we're going to start the setup process from inside the operating system itself. So here's our Windows NT Workstation 4.0. I'm going to log in. And we've got our desktop available to us. Before we perform our upgrade, let's look at our existing Windows NT Workstation desktop. This is the Workstation desktop. It's very basic. It's a simple install. But I did put one file on the desktop called Windows Upgrade Migration Test. And I just put some sample text inside of here. What we want to see is since we're doing an upgrade, all of our documents and everything that we have on our hard drive ideally will be here once the upgrade's complete. So we'll leave this on our desktop and we'll see what happens. To start the upgrade, we want to start the setup process from within this desktop. We don't want to necessarily boot the CD and have it start that way. We want to click on my computer and there's the XP CD that I have. And when we start it, we get the options of installing Windows XP, performing additional tasks, or checking for system compatibility. That's that check that goes through and looks at your hardware and your software and makes sure that what you're installing this on is actually going to work. What we want to do is just install Windows XP. So let's click on that. The first prompt we get is Windows Setup asking us, would you like to do an upgrade or would you like to do a new installation? A new installation is going to tell you important existing files may be lost. There's no maybe about it. If it does a new installation, it'll nuke what you have there. You do have the option on a new installation to put it on a separate partition so that you could dual boot Windows NT and Windows XP in this situation. What we want to do, however, is literally upgrade our NT to a new operating system. We don't want to run them simultaneously. So we're going to choose an upgrade. Windows prompts you to approve the Windows XP Professional End User License Agreement, or EULA. This is an agreement between you and Microsoft on how you will use this software. If you accept the agreement, you click I accept and click Next. If you don't, you don't get to install the software. Next, you're going to need the document that came with your XP for your product key. I'm not going to show you typing mine in because you should be using your own product key. This is how everything is licensed. And you should only use one product key for one installation of Windows XP because Microsoft tracks these things. After you've put in the license key, Microsoft XP will look at the hardware that you currently have. And if there is any hardware in your system that it does not support out of the CD, it will tell you we don't support one of the mass storage devices you happen to be using on your system. If you have a manufacturer supplied support disk, make sure you have that handy when this starts the next phase of the setup. It's going to copy a few installation files. And then almost immediately, it's going to say we're ready to restart the computer. So it gives this little countdown for us. When this restarts, if we do have a mass storage controller we would like to add as drivers to this, we add it during the startup process. The ones that I have in my system, I'm not using actively. I don't have any hard drives or anything connected to it. So I'm not going to run those drivers. I'm not going to install those extra drivers. Everything that I have should run just fine with the normal Windows XP setup configuration. So now it's going through a normal shutdown process while it reboots to start up Windows XP. I want you to notice a couple things as this is starting up. I'm going to stop the screen right here as it's counting down. This was counting down five seconds, and it was going to launch automatically this Microsoft Windows XP Professional setup. Notice that my Windows NT Workstation 4.0 is still here. What Microsoft did was create another section of the hard drive that it's going to start the setup program from. It's essentially starting a very small part of Windows XP so it can then complete the Windows XP process. Now, this would have started automatically in five seconds. We're not going to worry about that. We, well, I stopped it so we could 
could uh, have a look at what we have here. But I'm going to go ahead and hit Enter to continue this. Now right after I hit Enter, it's going to give us a prompt at the bottom to be able to look and add new hardware configuration. So if I wanted to add that driver, I press F6 if I want to install a third-party SCSI or RAID driver onto my system. I'm not going to install one in this case. I know it's going to work without that. But if you have special SCSI adapter, you have a special hard drive controller, that's the place you need to have a, a disk or a CD that your manufacturer provides to be able to load that so the Windows setup process can continue. Now Windows XP starts up this setup process. It's now going through the preparation for the installation. And it's going to go through and pull some files down and put them on the system so that everything is located on the hard drive. Once it's finished that process, it will do its installation, its full installation of Windows. If you recall from our original setup that we did in Windows XP where we did a clean install, we also got asked a lot of questions. Uh, what type of international settings would you like? Where is your time zone? What username would you like to use for this computer? There were a lot of things that were prompted for us. Notice we're not getting any of those prompts this time. That's because this is an upgrade. Our system already knows what the name of the device is. It already knows what time zone we happen to be in because Windows NT had all of that information already configured. The Windows XP upgrade process uses that same information and just applies it to the new Windows XP installation that it's adding now. Once our first file copying process is complete, Windows begins a rebooting process where it's going to do a more thorough installation. This is well, it's taken all the files that it's copied down to the hard drive, and it's going to start going through a very, very complete upgrade of Windows. Now that when we're in the actual installation process and Windows is rebooted, notice that the screen looks a little bit different. There are new video drivers loaded. We have a different level of graphics available to us. And now it's going to start the process of really installing and upgrading what we currently have from Windows NT to Windows XP. Notice that during the installation process, we're not really prompted at all to tell the system what type of hardware we have. We don't have to specify the video card we're using. We don't have to have to specify the network configuration and the network card that we're using. The Windows XP automatically identifies hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of different kinds of pieces of hardware, and it will automatically install those drivers as it goes. Once the installation has finished its process of copying files and registering components, it finally reboots the machine. And when we start up now, we should be running our Windows XP Professional Desktop. The first time XP runs, one of the things that it says is to approve the appearance of visual elements, Windows will automatically adjust your screen resolution. Again, one of those automated capabilities of Windows XP. And I can read that text, so I'll click OK to continue. When Windows XP starts up for the first time, it has a setup that brings you to a screen so that you can become more familiar with the interface. As thanks for purchasing Windows XP. Let's spend a few minutes setting up your computer. Play some music in the background so you can tell Microsoft really working on the user experience in their operating systems. I'm not going to activate this Windows right now because all I'm going to do is delete it and do something else with this particular partition. Who's going to use this computer? Well, I will. So I'll, this is when we first add the username of the person who's going to be logging on. This is not the administrator pass, the administrator user. This is the users who would normally have access to this machine. In a corporate environment, you don't really get this view of it. Everything's already set up for you prior to you ever starting up your operating system. And it says, thank you, we're ready to go. We can click Finish. And hopefully, we'll have an upgraded desktop that will have the same components from our previous desktop, the same user documents and the information that we left there. So let's see if our upgrade was successful. Upgrading to Windows XP is not a trivial process. It is one that takes a bit of time to do. And we want to be sure whenever we've started back up that all of the things are here that we left. Uh, one of the pieces that was important to us was to be sure that we could get to our network configuration, our computer setup, and everything does appear to be working exactly as we would expect. We have all the same folders and directories that we normally would have. And everything that is, was on our machine prior to starting this process is still there. Now that we've completed our upgrade, let's go through our checklist and make sure this worked exactly the way we were hoping. 
One is that we need to verify that the system is indeed working. We need to make sure that it boots properly, that we can get to a desktop, and that it appears to see all of the hardware that we normally would have in our system. And our system certainly worked just fine in that regard. Another thing that's important is to make sure all your data is still there. Are all of your application data there? Is all of your documents still there? Uh, we want to be sure that they were unaffected by the upgrade process. That's why we do a backup prior to looking at this. So let's make sure that the documents we started with are still there. In our Windows XP desktop, if you recall before we did the migration, there was another file, a migration document we put here, but it's not on here anymore. And that's because the migration document was on the desktop of the administrator, not the desktop of Professor Messer. With Windows XP, usernames are used very extensively. So what we're going to do is search. And I'm going to search for all files. And I'm going to put in the file name uh, Migration. And notice that it finds the file. It is there. It's under the administrator desktop. If we were to log in as administrator, we would see it on the desktop. And if we double click, you can see, indeed, it's that same text file we had there. So don't be thrown that things are in different places now that we've migrated over. You may have to move some things around and change the, the location of the files afterwards. But hopefully, everything is exactly the way we left it. And there shouldn't be any change to the documents themselves. Also after the upgrade, we're not quite done. We have installed our Windows XP from a CD. And there are certainly service packs and, and security patches and driver updates we probably don't have available to us. So the first thing is to get this thing up to speed with the service packs and make sure all the security patches are installed. And you may want to do that prior to actually plugging it into the network and having internet access. You also want to think about getting the latest drivers for your video, for your printers, and for your other hardware devices. And then finally, you can think about making sure your applications are at the right version to be able to work with this new operating system. If you can use your existing executables and the way that they're installed and run them right now, that's great. But many applications do require an upgrade, especially if you're moving from Windows NT all the way up to Windows XP. We've done a lot in this particular video. We've upgraded. We have uh, gone through a checklist of things prior to this. We have done the actual upgrade process. And we've done a post-upgrade verification and talked about the updates that you have to worry about now that you've got this new operating system installed on your desktop. For more a videos, to learn more about operating systems, hardware, and much more, visit our website, freeaplus.com.